Rain Access Solutions. Hi guys, I'm Glenn of Rain Access Solutions. Welcome to my vlog. Welcome also to my C-Sharp.net tutorial, lesson number 11. In this lesson, we will learn about using the generic list in C-Sharp.net. We will also learn how to add the values in the generic list into a text box with uh, its multiple line set to true. Let's begin. Let's create a new project. We will create a form application. New. And we will name it Lesson 11. When we're creating a new project in csharp.net, always select the latest version of .NET. In my case, I will select the .NET 8.0 with its long-term support. Click Create. Okay, so here is our form. I am always teaching everyone to make it a habit to always change the name of your form. So it is easy for you to find it later in a group of forms in a project. Let's find the name property and change it to FRM Lesson 11 without the spacing in between. Find the text and rename it to Lesson 11. Now that we have our form, let's add a text box. And set its multiple lines or multi lines to true. And its name to txt list okay after you set the multi-line um, properties to true you can now drag the guide at the bottom and bring it down to increase its height Now that we have our text box, we can add our command button and change its name to cmd add. Change the text to add. Copy this button and align it with both the previous button and the text box. Change its text to remove and change its name to CMD remove. Okay, now that we have all the needed controls for this project, let's go ahead and put them in the center of the form. Select the form and let's go and make the form appear in the center of the screen when we run it. To do that, click on the form and find the property start position. Select the center screen and click, click it from the list. Now every time we run the form, it will go into the center of the screen. So what we wanted to do now is to create a some sort of a generic collection a list the good thing with a generic list in c sharp.net is that you can create some kind of a, a list a record or a table the beauty of the using the generic list is that you can add or remove items from the list 
the list can grow or shrink dynamically as you add or remove elements. And elements can be accessed by their index. And we can also refer to its element by the value of the text. So we wanted to create a list of fruits and save those fruits in this text box. And I'm going to do that in the Add button. So we will also learn about the scope or scoping of the memory variables and declarations. But before we go to that, let's create our generic list. Here is how we declare it. Okay, we are declaring a list called fruits and here we are creating a new instance of that um, list. Now this curly bracket here is the initialization of the list fruits. We can leave this empty or we can initialize it with adding a pre um, predetermined number of um, list for example i can just leave it empty or add something Okay, so let me explain this briefly. We are using the text property of this text box and assign the value from this line. What this line means, we are using the string.join function. This function joins um, the elements in the list into one string and it concatenates each element into a single line but this string join has a two parameters this string that join accepts two parameters one is for the delimiter and the second is for the values uh, from the list so this environment new line is a system environment it's from the namespace system environment or part of the namespace this new line here is a, um, a delimiter or an equivalent to n or the line carriage feed which like creates an enter key this backslash n here is equivalent to pressing the key enter somewhat or somehow i'm not saying it that's the actual or the total equivalent of it but it's it is similar to that so Okay, let me just run the program so we can understand what I'm saying and then I'll go back to it and explain a little bit more. Let's uh, redesign this form and add a label. Change the text to list. Generic list. Okay. Then we can add another text box without the without its multi line on here. Set to false. Now we can copy this label and just add um new fruit okay and then we'll click add remove 
let's align it to this right side and add that okay so how about we remove the colon and bring it up okay so this is a new fruit whenever we want to add something we enter it from the new fruit and add it here by after clicking the add button so let's rename this txt i mean this text box to txt new fruit all right so here instead of text we're going to add something on the fruits based on the value of the new fruit so names oh sorry not names fruits add txt um, new fruit text whatever we type something in here will be added here after we click the add button that's because of this command let's run I'm going to add and orange so as you can see it did not add the, the new fruit to the bottom let's check the multi line if it was set to false yes it is set to true okay so you can see from here that every time we add a new fruit it's replacing the entire content of this list look let's try it again durian add and let's add orange now what is supposed to happen when we when we click the add button is or the orange should be added at the end of this line but what is happening here is that all the list has been replaced by the last item that we have entered so let's see our code you will see that it happens because of the declaration that every time we press the click button we are declaring a new list and we are just overwriting the previous list that we've created so it's like canceling it now here is the part that we're going to discuss a little bit about the scoping of variables and other stops like list this fruit or list it is only visible in this uh, method or event and every time we click the add button it creates a new string so in order for us to retain previous information or previous elements in the list this string should not shouldn't be inside the click event and place it outside so that instead of it recreating the list over again and again we're just going to add a new element to it in order to do that we will have to remove the declaration of this list and bring it outside the event here okay so now the fruits list is outside the command button click event let's try and run it let's add apple let's add orange now as you can see the new fruit is being added to the end of the line instead of replacing the whole the whole list with single fruit okay so this is what we call the the right scoping of um, a var variable okay, now let's try and create the code for removing item from the generic list so let's just copy this code and place it in the remove click event and I'm going to change the add to remove let's run it 
let's create the list first. Let's add apple, mango, and durian. If we want to remove something from the list, we will make use of this code that we have just written. So if I wish to remove the mango, let's just type mango and click remove. There, it is being removed from the list. And the point of reference is its name. We try and remove something that is not in the list, nothing will happen. Let's say we remove melon. Oh, sorry. I just clicked that. Let's say we remove um, pineapple. So there you go. There's no pineapple in the list, so nothing is being removed. So if I wish to remove the melon, I can just type it in here and click the remove button. If you have multiple melon in the list, it's going to be deleted by its um, by referencing its index list. So let's remove apple and durian. Okay, that's it for today's video guys. I hope you learned something from my tutorial. If you find this video useful, please subscribe to my channel and leave your comments in the comment section below. Thank you very much for watching. Have a nice day everyone. Goodbye.